So this game is called Encased. Encased is a turn-based sci-fi RPG, a game for those who love Fallout, Divinity, Original Sin, Wasteland, and Shadowrun, aka me. Make decisions, fight, study anomalies, survive, craft, and find equipment in the anomalous zone under the dome cut off from the outside world. So this is apparently a CRPG that is kind of Fallout-esque, but more sci-fi. Sounds right up my alley. As you can see, this is already out in early access. It's about $30. And, uh, yeah, let's take a look. First things first. Just so we're not yelling over the game, we turn that down. Take a look at what options we have. So that's low. We'll try an ultra here. You are here for video games? What up, Steven? How are you? Edge panning. Show unavailable node text. I don't know what that means, so we're going to put, put yes. All right, let's go. You're going? You remember how it all started. The year was 1971. The dome was discovered in a remote desert, a gigantic structure of unknown origin. Then, the leading world powers founded the Cronus Corporation with the purpose of researching it. Scientists and other experts were transported inside the dome from Crystal Sands, a city built at its foot. The Spire Station was also built at the top of the mysterious formation and all the goods and personnel were moving through it to reach the lands beneath the dome. Cronus promised the flourishing of the civilization in its advertising materials, teleportation technology, flying cars, new power sources, the cure for all diseases, maybe even eternal life, who knows? We thought it's our golden ticket, we thought these hospitality open doors led us to the greatest treasury in the universe. And although it was impossible to leave the dome, this subtle warning didn't stop us. Our faith in the better future made us blind. We were looking for new technologies and found millions of strange mechanisms we didn't know how to use. We were searching for immortality, but we lost so many lives. We let the genie out of the bottle, and we had no idea what it will take in exchange for fulfilling our wishes. We were delusional, not seeing the big picture. In September 1976, the day you were delivered from Spire to Magellan Station, the delusions were never stronger. That is an intense voiceover. Yipes. All right. I am doing good. I am surviving. And for right now, that's enough, you know? Okay. I'm actually super excited to get into this one. It was a lesson in how many different ways you could say we fucked up. <laughs> Y'all acting like you've never played a sci-fi game before? Right. Time to get the, uh, the nighttime look going on here. I mean, we should probably be female. Oh, she's cute. Okay. Okay, we're going to go through all that in a second. Interesting. You can choose your body type and your gender. Very interesting. Okay. What do we have for head type? Oh, yeah, baby. Hair. I kind of want to make it look somewhat like 
that, I guess. Oh, but ponytail though. Yep, ponytail wins. Hair color. Are you fucking serious? Pink isn't one of them? Oh, come on, dude. What's with this then? <laughs> Okay. I can't tell what features mean, so I'm assuming it's butt. <clears throat> it's probably like tattoos, actually. Is there something that shows some skin? Oh man, look at this though. What does this change for features? So what the hell does features change? Perhaps it, oh wait, it's probably piercings, isn't it? It's piercings, yep. Okay. You can change the color of the piercing, I guess. I wish I could like scroll closer. All right, let's go with that. Okay, so Blackwing. Using the most powerful weapons and advanced military equipment, the employees of Blackwing Project Humanity uh, protect humanity from myriad hazards from of the dome. Blackwing's command is made up of the best officers from the most highly trained armies in the world who coordinate their subordinates to provide maximum security for everyone from for everyone from every wing under the dome. Orange Wayne. Every person deserves a second chance, especially those willing to make amends for their crimes by working for the betterment of humanity. Orange Wayne was created especially for these people. Its employees are everywhere, providing every kind of domestic service from cleaning and delivery to manufacturing and construction. Okay. There are a lot of, there's a lot of work to be done. Every employee of Orange Wayne will find a way to make their own contribution. White Wayne. It is often said that the time of great discoveries has now passed. What an nincom what nincompoopery. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I've ever seen nincompoop used in a video game or in writing in general, but okay. Just like Galileo and Newton, White Wing employees are launching a new era of science. We represent the best minds of humanity, working diligently in laboratories equipped with the best modern tech to uncover the mysteries of this ancient civilization. Blue Wing. The dome lay dormant for centuries and came to life only with the arrival of people. Today, this region is a gigantic 300 or 30,000 square kilometers construction site with thousands of cars, snow white cities, and a network of motorways spanning the inhospitable desert. Cronus is rightfully proud of its world-class infrastructure, built from the ground up thanks to the hard work and knowledge of the employees of the Blue Wing. All right, so this is your normal, everyday worker, I guess. The Silver Wing. Determine the first priority out of a thousand. Determine the first priority out of a thousand. Find experts who can suss out the best solutions to every problem. Equip workers with the right tools and ship the necessary materials where they need to go. Every base built and every successful expedition is a testament to the hard work and deep wisdom of Silver Wing managers. Okay, we do not want to be a manager. That sounds terrible. I think we're going to go with Black Wing. And it seems like it kind of randomly chose everything for me. I kind of want... Hmm... Let's take one out of Psyche, put it into Charisma. Let's take some out of Brains and put it more into Charisma. Let's take one out of that and put it into Charisma. I want a more charismatic person, you know? Oh man, this basically is Shadowrun. Okay. I'm just going to go with what they set me up with here. Because this seems like it's pro- oh wait, unassigned tag skills, three. Unavailable in current version. Damn. Tech 30 doesn't sound good. Deafness, hand to hand. Melee weapons. 
What is my melee weapons? 37? I kind of want light weapon stuff here. Criticals. Light weapons 110. Man, demoralization seems like something that would be real good. Blinding strike. This is probably what I get for moving shit out of charisma. Frankly. High tech weapons. Tech 30. What's my tech? Tech is 12. Okay. We'll take charge up. God, dude. Oh, wait. We can... Okay. We can take some more stuff down here. Here we go. Piloting. Let's take medicine. Uh, we should take gunsmithing prop. Wait. Take that. Side impact. This is all driving stuff. Car driving. All right, hold on. Whoops. Okay, we're gonna leave our charisma to garbage. Ooh, lock picking. Lock picking sounds good. First aid sounds good. Hacking sounds really good. Um Gunsmithing. Tag skills are your advanced skills. Soliting skills tagged automatically grants 20 points. I think I want precise shot, so tech 30. Oh, wait, I already used that up. Okay, under piloting. Let's do this. No, not heavy duty. Maybe road warrior? Hmm. Let's say our tag skills. We could just add to speech. Light weapons. Let's do hand to hand as well, actually. Barter, intimidation. Let's do intimidation. And disarming shot. All right. All right, we got a bruiser type character. You take the envelope handed to you. The Cronus logo stares up at you from it along with a large number one. You open the envelope. Inside you find a foil coated postcard depicting a strange glowing mechanism. A second card serves as an official invitation. Do not skip the intro. You receive a second envelope. Inside is a copy of the form you filled out earlier. The third envelope contains another congratulatory postcard and a ticket to Crystal Sands. 
This is the town of Crystal Sands, and explorers last stop before they enter the dome. The air here is dry, heat, heated by the exhausts of transporters, and cooled again by the army of aircon units. The t a town built on sand, flattened by soldiers' boots and carved by tires. The Frontier City, the last place in a soft, toothless world where you are not ashamed to be a soldier, where there are no hippies and anti-war demonstrations, and where a firm hand, a willingness to fight, and readiness to follow orders will always be appreciated. The sergeant atop a platform looks right past you with another black wing with the other black wing soldiers you enter the cabin of the funicular the door closes the doors close the cabin carries you to the spire a gentle wind rocks the crowded cabin at the handrail your view of the city is obscured by the rising heat the funicular rises on frost whitens the windows its script pale upon the glass the cabin heating comes on Look at the window. Clinging to the handrail, you peer through the frosty glass. The cabin emerges from milk-white clouds. The sunlight reflects bright upon the roof of the dome. You shield your eyes. The spire approaches. A moment and the cavern shudders and docks. The spire. A steady white light floods the station hallways. You feel like you're in outer space or at a busy shopping mall. The clerk at the desk gives you a friendly nod and passes you the fourth envelope, fourth and last. Inside you find your name tag, permitted pass, and a magnetic chip no bigger than an aspirin. On the chip you find engraved a number 38. At capsule 38, you put the chip in the slot. The door opens, you step inside. Five others have arrived before you. You give them a wave before taking a seat. The round door closes with a dull clap. The capsule begins its descent, accelerating slowly. Greet the female Blackwing employee. Lieutenant Elsa Ol Olofsson, the Black, introduces herself. She puts a hand on the shoulder of the orange scene beside her. This is my first assignment. Check out the orange wing employee. The man in the orange jumps who pretends to not notice you. Eyes lowered, he studied his own thin wrists and the handcuffs that bind him. Okay, watch the white wing employee. A young woman, her tag reads Tomoko Kimura, or I guess Tomoko would be her name, not Tomoko. Tomoko Kimura, Kimura. She catches your reflection in the glass and turns. There is an article in Subverse about light emitting minerals with changeable crystalline grids. Quietly, she answers a question you didn't get a chance to ask. I'm here for them. Read the blue wing. The Russian squeezes your fingers in his own. Gesturing to the window, he points at the lattice of unfinished aqueducts standing tall and still in the sand. He then pats himself on the chest. Looks like he doesn't speak English. And the silver. Monty James. The silver puts one hand on his chest with the other playfully and with the other playfully salutes you. He nods at your name take. I've read your profile. The capsule sinks in the clouds. The silver knocks on the viewport. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, these are your last moments in your old world. I advise you to enjoy them. The cabin quivers as if breaking through an invisible barrier. The black, the black lets out a barely audible breath. That's the boundary. There's no going back now. So the boundary is the dome border, apparently. Okay. The ground comes up fast. The capsule hits the braking cushions. The door opens to the desert, flooded with sunlight. An orange transporter steers, stands nearby. The silver adjusts his jumpsuit and narrows his eyes. Attention, you're now entering Cronus territory. Mr. Potanin, Miss Kimura, please follow me and pick your seat. Mr. Bo Bisley look uncom looks uncomfortable. Elsa, would you be so kind and provide him with handcuffs that are more humane? The orange smiles, smiles bitterly as he takes the seat in the back of the transporter near the barred window. His humane handcuffs softly shine. The vehicle begins to move. The world under the dome looks like a dream. A great and glorious dream. The transporter pulls out onto a brand new road with freshly painted yellow-white markings. The fairway horizon glows blue-silver as the light glints on the edges of the dome. You peer into the distance. Station vehicles, atten stations, vehicles, antennae. A gigantic construction site. Solar batteries spread their petals under the sun. Compared with this, Crystal Sands is no more than a dusty mirage. 
The car turns off down the street into an underground parking lot. The silver opens the door and the car is bathed in yellow light of a dozen lamps, of dozens of lamps. In the far corner of the lot, a spacious elevator awaits you. Doors open. The lift's powerful engine suddenly falls silent and the platform stops. The hollow echo of voices coming from below. The la <clears throat> the hollow echo of voices is coming from below. The lamps in the wall fixture are buzzing quietly. The soft rumble of distant mechanisms comes from behind the ventilation hatch. Okay. Crap. Okay. So, one thing we gotta do is... This is a me problem. Is I don't have a middle click button because it doesn't work properly can I not change that either it doesn't look like you can actually change that crap okay well that's a shame All right, well, let's go take a look here. Let's go talk to Derek. Stranger bounces back and turns his flashlight on you. Herman, what the? Hey, who the hell are you? Tell him your patience is running thin and you're about to start getting angry. You need to get to the base immediately. The blue smirks and takes a step toward you. You know, I don't like you at all. You're rude and you ask a lot of questions. Too many. Sorry, but you're not leaving. Okay. So we can scan. Bolt throwing. Toss a metal bolt to check for hidden traps. We can dig or force. Smash a door. Okay. I think we should just run up and strike him, right? Damn, I don't have enough action points to do anymore. How the fuck is this guy evading, like, every hit I do? We did it. So this is what I have. He had a potato. Oh lord. We have a grid. We have a grid for our <laughs> inventory. Okay. Let's take a look at this letter. Dear Mr. Exler, we received your latest money transfer the other day. My dear friend, for the umpteenth time, I can think of no words to fully express our speaking on behalf of our team and our young patients at the hospital. Gratitude to you. You will find this past month's expense report attached together with a postcard from Marticia. When we told her about your charitable donations to our hospital, she was excited for the chance to draw you. Oh no, we killed a guy that donates to a hospital charity shit well it looks like it looks blue most of the time but sometimes flashes unnaturally bright colors has a beneficial effect on the owner's physical condition you monster I know I know actually we should search this, I think. And probably this. Gotta search everything, you know? Uh, 
Okay. Oh. Well, I could have just done that, I suppose. Duty roster. Stephen Higgins, technician, September 10th. Martin Kem Kmelnitsky, technician, September 11th. Steve Higgins, Derek Exler, September... F okay. Do not forget to file an approved duty roster in advance. A piece of cloth. Okay. A square hatch with big latch locks. All right, so I'm assuming we're gonna need a tool of some kind for that. A wooden bar. Plastics, piece of cloth. So this is all crafting material, I assume, that I'm picking up. Oh, I think we turned the, uh, yeah, the electric motor that powers the elevators back on. There's nothing else on him, huh? Oh, that steam's killing me. Oh my god, I'm almost dead. Four out of 34. I almost died there. Provokes your turn, blah, blah, blah. Is this healing? Med pack. That only healed 15. Let's just consume this. That only healed one. Well, I probably deserve it for, you know, murdering a dude who donates to charity. Visitors to Magellan Station will find a hospitable welcome in a large luminous hall. Everything within has been d designed to make our recruits comfortable while waiting for registration. Polite and affable personnel, cozy chairs and couches, a vending machine, and of course, some colorful and engaging informational material about our organization and life under the dome. Please note, the vending machine only accepts combons, uh, the currency of the dome. Welcome to Magellan, Leaflet. <sighs> Welcome indeed. Welcome to the Magellan Station. I wonder if they know that I have blood on my hands. Hello, novice. Come to register, please. A tall receptionist watches you from behind his desk with a bored, haughty look. He gestures impatiently for you to come closer. The employee glances at you indifferently. His upper lip is ever so slightly curled, you presume with contempt. All employees must first register. Come to the desk, please. The nameplate on the desk reads Dean Rayhead, Administrator. The Administrator slaps himself on the forehead as if he just remembered something. I almost forgot the regulation greeting before registration. Just a second. Holy shit. Do we tell him what happened in the elevator? No. Listen to what he has to say. Rayhead takes a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from under the desk, quickly rewinds the tape to the beginning, and presses play. The speakers explode with a cackling sound over which the sound... with a cracking... crackling sound over which the sound of a metronome grows louder. Solemn music begins to play from the tape recorder. The administrator's face takes on a serious expression. Dear employee, I, Administrator Dean Rayhead, welcome you under... Welcome you under the dome on behalf of the Cronus Corporation. The administrator coughs and continues. By joining our company, you are choosing the path of science and progress. You are mankind's best. We ask that you live up to this title. The dean looks as squint at the monitor. Deserve this title. You do your job honestly. Obey the law. Respect your colleagues. And the music fades and the administrator finishes speaking his last words in silence. And together, we will build the best future for all of mankind. Dean puts the tape recorder away. 
We're done with the greeting. Now I'll register you and upgrade your select... Selectron? Selectron? I guess Selectron. Are you ready? So a Selectron is an electronic key and ID of computer program embedded in the Selectron grants you access to certain areas depending on your win and rank. Tell about the man that attacked you in the elevator operating room. The administrator listens to you with a studied attention. When you finish your tale, he points in the direction of the hall. I'm sorry, but I'm not responsible for the security. Talk to Indra. Let him deal with it and... The receptionist raises his hand and indifferent gaze at you. Just a piece of advice. You better not tell that it, that it happened to you in the elevator operating room or the shaft. Actually, you ought to compose a detention slip explaining that you... What you were doing in the restricted territory for the personnel was special clearance level only. Maybe you'll even be given a fine. Express your revulsion. You almost been killed there. Dean looks at you dis a bit displeasedly. Why get so nervous? In general, we take the security seriously. If he had killed you, he would surely be put in jail and, of course, pay a fine. All right, let's register. Dean's hands freeze above the keyboard. The administrator gives you a nod. Dictate your data to him. Enter the data in the terminal yourself. You squeeze through the narrow window, bend over the reception disk, and type the data in the database. After pres hitting proceed, you return to your seat. Dean is muttering something under his breath as he returns to the terminal, clearly displeased. Rayhead scans the computer screen. So, you're on the staff uh, at the... You're on the staff of the Magellan Station. Your Selectron, please. I'll update the firmware. The Dean presses the docking port of your pass into, or to a recess in the casing of his computer. The administrator returns your Selectron. Here, you ha now you have the first cl uh, clearance level. As a Black Wing employee, you get access to the barracks, armory, surveillance rooms, punishment cells, and other special locations. The Dean continues, each new employee has several mandatory tasks to perform. I can tell you about each one briefly or in detail. I'll be satisfied with the short version. To make it short, get your uniform from the storage, get your weapon in the armory, complete training in the training ground, learn how to use a scanner, avoid anomalies, and obtain scientific knowledge on the white wing level. After this, return to me. I'll tell you what you need to do next. Dean sits back in his armchair. That, that's all. I hope there won't be any questions. I have no more questions. Great. I'll be waiting for you. He reaches for the tape recorder, but the last moment thinks better of it. The instructions call for some welcoming words, but dash it all. That's nonsense. Welcome to Magellan. Hell yeah, you better believe I'm going to search the flower pots. What would you do if you were working on a giant, like, space station and you just saw somebody get, oh, hello, get off the elevator and just start, like, grabbing a bunch of fucking dirt and mud from the flower pots? You would probably, like, report them, right? For weird behavior? I wouldn't want to be on a space station with somebody doing this shit. Monty James's suitcase. I just found a secret. A common relic makes living organisms healthier. Okay, well, we're gonna take all of that. Report on stolen relics. Oh, it's in Russian. Never mind, it's not in Russian. Classified for the eyes of Magellan Station Security Chief William Dell. Three waste crates from your inspection or from your station have been seized at the spire for inspection. Hidden cavities in the form of false bombs were discovered containing more than 250 kilos of smuggled relics, two of which in the highest category of rarity. In order to dis, uh, deceive the scales, the crates contain relics that lighten the weight of the load. Over a billion dollars worth of stolen goods almost walked past our final security cordon onto the black market. 
This is a situation of utmost severity. You must immediately take steps to identify these criminals. I have no doubt this operation is beyond the abilities of a single person. I expect results within a month. P.S. Find attached full list of stolen relics with their associated characteristics. Rudolph Maycroft, head of customs, spire station. I mean, we should put this relic on though, right? Don't mind if I do. See, sometimes it pays to be weird in video games, you know? Okay. Could you help me please if you don't mind? What do you want? A black wind employee salutes you. Indra Kapoor, security service. Sorry to bother you, but we have a problem. After making sure you're listening, he continues. The fourth camera in the sur video surveillance room lost signal. I've already called technicians on the radio, but they're taking their time. Could you take a look and see what's wrong with the equipment? I would be very grateful. Sure. I'm indebted to you. The surveillance room is upstairs. Hi, Courtney. A pale, thin woman with a cigarette greets you without offering her hand. You look down at her badge. Courtney Resner. Oh, shit. Resner. Surveillance services. Say that you were asked to repair the surveillance system. The black glances at you. Then you should have a look at the terminal. Come up and find out the breakdown cause. Once you look at the monitors of the surveillance system, you realize right away the problem is serious. There's no signal at all from the fourth camera. Courtney hovers over your shoulder, engulfing you in the stench of old tobacco. This has happened before. The video surveillance cards installed on the mainframe burnt out a couple times. Another time, the cleaner pulled out the wires. But maybe I messed something up in the program. I just pressed here and everything disappeared. She taps the button with the long black nail, reminding of a claw of a bird of prey. Take note of her nails. Courtney's nails are definitely not up to regulation. They're three centimeters long, covered with sparkling black color, with almost razor sharp tips. Resner hides her hands as if she notices you paying attention to them. If you don't have any further questions, please take care of the problem. I have to work. Fourth monitor. There's no signal from the fourth monitor, just white noise. The sticker on the monitor hints this camera shows the outlet of the ventilation system. Who would ever need to monitor the ventilation system? The terminal and software are working properly. Seems not to be a software problem after all, but that the breakdown is either signal cables or in the mainframe. Uh, entrance zone. Elevators. An empty hall. A young woman in a silver wing uniform paces back and forth with a stack of leaflets. The fifth monitor receives a signal from a camera monitoring the vending machines selling snacks and drinks. One of the machines lies on its side and is in obvious need of repair. And the bathroom, the utility room, and the surveillance room where you are now located. The camera's angle is strange. It is turned to the side filming a window and some posters hanging on the wall. Some posters hanging on a wall, huh? Alright, well, let's look around for some other stuff. Stack of documents. Okay. Maybe we can hack this. Use terminal. Required ability rank three. Or wait, hacking level one. Yeah, okay, I need level three to hack this terminal, I see. This terminal we can use though. Hello employee, please enter the command to the select the desired option. 
The control room panel cut out. Reason electromagnetic pulse of unknown origin. The energy supply efficiently restored after eight minutes. Uh, but during this period, a spoon disappeared from the kitchen. No visual signal from the fifth camera. Reason, a chewing gum stuck over it. The Orange Wayne employee responsible for this act of vandalism made from... The Orange Wayne employee responsible for this act of vandalism made from molester motives was placed in a punishment cell. Read three. A message is displayed on screen. Two screens went off. Reason, a short circuit caused by coffee spilled over the control panel. Altogether, the screens were not functioning for five hours. The Blackwind employee, Courtney Reznor, was issued a warning. Reparation costs would be recompensed from her salary. I think we're going to hit her. Let's try talking a little bit more. Still working on the issue. I'm pretty sure she's like a bad guy. Uh, how do I get it? Okay. Save. Kill the bee. Uh-oh. Indra Kapoor is coming up here now. Oh, he doesn't know yet. <clears throat> I wouldn't say it's a random fight, though. It's one of those fights that, like, when you're watching the detective movie, the detective just, like, goes like a pow or something to the uh, dude. And then everybody's like, oh, my God, what are you doing? And then he's like, look. And then he shows, like, them their arm. And it's like a tattoo of ISIS or something, you know? My character noticed that this character is shady. Hold up. Okay. So it's like one of those detective moments, you know? My character's getting the shit kicked out of her, though. <laughs> okay. How do you use... Items. You know, this was actually kind of a close fight. <laughs> that picture is hilarious, by the way. Floor level, 
minus one, lobby. We're gonna try again and just hope I get lucky with some actual hits here. Man. I somehow had worse luck here. Partial blindness. Okay. You know what? I need to find a uh, melee weapon of some sort. Or like armor or something. I want to see this crafting window. Oh, I need to probably find stuff I can craft. Okay, let's look around a little bit more. Yo, this game is kind of dope, though. This is definitely one of those games that, like... If you're into Fallout or Shadowrun, this is something you should maybe keep an eye out on. Buttery? Mmm, butter. Okay, what does using that do? The sound of running water. I mean, I can use a wash basin, but... I'm guessing I can use the toilet as well. Negative 10. The true survival simulator. Negative 10 radiation. That's kind of funny. Bottle of alcohol. Pure ethanol. Disinfectant. Destroys all bacteria known to science. I don't think that's true, but... You wink at your reflection. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go find a weapon of some sort. Because I want to take... I want to take her out. Because I really think she's like possibly a spy or something. I don't know. Employee of the year. Tray table is sticky with spilled soda. Some obviously touched up photos of Magellan's best employees are looking down at you from a backlit poster. Broken drink machine? Hey, Nula beef noodles. Hell yeah. Take all of this. This is the leaflet lady. Take the leaflet. Take a couple of you for your friends. No, that's okay. All right. Let's go find a weapon. Do I have anything that could... Wait. You could make a shiv probe or a lockpick out of them. Come up with... Okay. So, how do I do this? No workbench needed. I don't think destroy is what I want. And I can't equip it as a weapon. All right. We got to find a workbench, I think. Uh, let's go to the military post. Floor level minus three. 
garrison and isolation ward. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Next to the metal detector, a typical dome scene is playing out. An orange is standing with his hands behind his head while a small, angry Asian man in a black uniform pats down the pockets of his jumpsuit. The orange sighs. You took my beer and you took my chips. What's the deal, Yaddo? I was sweeping the vehicle entrance. What could I possibly have stolen from there other than sand? The black, whose badge says Yato Nakayama, glares angrily. How am I supposed to know what you stole? You're a crook. You'd steal anything that isn't nailed down. Come on, take it out. I'm going to find it anyway. Time to get involved. Convince your fellow black to leave the orange alone. No, search him myself. Nakayama steps aside and lets you approach more, more radius. Fine, you pat him down if you want to. Let's see what you find. You search the orange pockets, but come up empty handed. The black chuckles as he observes you. Yeah, I didn't find anything easier either, but the son of a bitch definitely swiped something. I'm supposed to just let him go again. The handyman shakes his head and smiles condescendingly down at the black. Yaddo, yaddo, yaddo. I've never stolen anything in my life and you know it. You also know there isn't a damn thing in my pockets. The guard gestures angrily, trying to be clever, eh? Get lost. The orange walks away, smiling good-naturedly. Okay. I... Why do you have 9mm ammo? That doesn't seem like something a fugitive should have. You came for training, then you're in the right place. I don't want any of that shit. I need to find a weapon. Or like, I need to make a shiv or something. Open this door. Where can I get armor like this? Gunther looks surprised. That should have been explained to you in boot camp. Reinforced armor is only issued at staff sergeant rank or above. Information is privileged. Blackwing employees only. I'm Blackwing, you fool. Fine. There's a turret here. Uh, try to switch the computer on. The switch toggles on and off with a satisfying mechanical click. Can I, like, hack this or? All right, let's look through some files and whatnot, shall we? Okay. Massive rotary dial phone. You pick up the receiver and press it to your ear. You hear continuous beep. Okay. Well, that doesn't seem good, I guess. Or it doesn't seem helpful anyway. this guy's deal 
He sure seems shadowy. Let's talk to him. A lean, dark skin, silver with hard hair and a huge cigar between his teeth is sitting in front of you. As you approach him, he gives you a trickish grin and slowly raises a hand with widespread fingers above the table. Something really weird happens. All the paper clips, pencils, spread toothpicks, and all other kinds of little bits of trash that were laying on the table soar up and hang in the air. The silver colored badge reading Andre Mihai Psy Instructor. Andre Mihai Psy Instructor does it as well. Screw up your face skeptically. You can't be fooled by parlor tricks. The silver trills with laughter. He likes your reaction. The objects that have just been soaring fall back on the table with a muffled noise. Give me your hand. He demands and before you can answer, grabs your hand with his strong brown fingers. Andrew gropes your hand with a concentrated expression. Do you practice? Bells. Bulbs. Brushing mugs off the table. Aha. Uh -huh. Release your hand and move away. It appears to be anything but easy. The silver grabs you with his second hand. Wait, wait, wait. Leaving already? I can teach you the psyche tricks. Yes. Ah, that's easy. Can you clean a rifle? Tie shoelaces? It's the same here. You learn it the same way. The same talent is required. He lays... Uh, he takes off a body-colored glove, so thin you notice it only now. Look, that's a glove, right? But it's not a simple glove. This is a holy mama mia glove. <laughs> it takes the energy from your coconut, your psyche, and whop, concentrates it. The silver opens a drawer and takes out another glove, smelling of iron and talc. Here you go, aha. Uh -huh. I got more. Ask him to show you some trick. As a response, Andrew jumps from his armchair and brings his face close to yours, breathing out cigar smoke. Quickly, think of a number. The straight and unexpected question calls numerous numbers into your mind, but you can't name a single one of them. The silver turns to your... or looks into your eyes. 3, 14, 13, 76. He easily names all the numbers you've got in mind. Okay. Well, we got a psionic glove. So... Hooray? I guess. You know I'm curious, right? Hey, buddy. Just hanging out here. Definitely not going to... Oh my god. Alright. Hey, buddy. I actually can't attack him. Never mind then. Alright, let's just steal all his shit then. Shall we? This pathing is so dumb. <laughs> I don't think I checked this yet. I, in fact, did not. Oh, we're almost at our hour. This is definitely not a game that, like, you get into the meat of something in an hour. But I think an hour is definitely enough time to recognize if this is the type of thing you would be into or not. This is, like, really good. <laughs> like, this is surprisingly really good. Especially when I saw that it was early access. I'm super into this so far. This is very shadow runny. But, like, way more sci- like, sci-fi shadow run, you know? Not, uh, not like cyberpunk. I still can't believe I haven't found, like, a weapon of any sort, you know? This is what? A shower room? 
You would think if there's a weapon anywhere, it would be in like a locker room here. Hey, we're relieved. What does relief give? You feel relief. A small amount of radiation has been purged. Vigorous. You've been invigorated. Your initiative is temporarily boosted. Okay. Well. Good to know, I suppose. Okay. We're going to quickly find something and then try to fight somebody, I think. I was really hoping I would find a workbench down here. I mean, I guess I could, like, try to pickpocket somebody. Oh, no, I just can't. I could size shock him. No, I can't. Never mind. You know what? I know what I'm going to do. Check it, right? <clears throat> okay. Let's hope this goes well. No, oh, I can't do it. Okay. Oh, the guards are. Oh yeah, I'm so fucking dead. not coming in here that's odd okay all oh, that crit damage though Give her the knockout punch. Oh no. I'm just like labeled a criminal now, I guess. Okay, let's try to like leave. I don't understand, like, if they're alerted, why, uh, excuse me? Did you just see what was on this screen, on this television screen? <laughs> I wish I could zoom in further. Look at 
that. <laughs> Fuck shit ass. Hello, please. Thanks. Oh man, where can I get that? Yeah, enhance, enhance, enhance. Elevator for oranges. Of course, like everybody on the floor is alerted. All right, let's go out in a blaze of glory. This turret is going to kick the crap out of us. Oh, maybe they're just going to arrest me? <laughs> nope. <laughs> they're definitely not just going to arrest me. <laughs> All right, I'm taking you down with me. Oh. And here we go. I'm not dead. Holy shit. There we go. They just sit back down. Your earthly path has come to an end. All right. So that is encased. That is available now if you want to buy it in early access. If not, you can wait until it is fully out. Uh, I really like this game, actually. I think it's really, really cool. I think this is going to get better, probably. I mean, Lord knows, I hope it gets better for like early access or whatever. It's about 30 bucks, so decently priced. And um, if you're a fan of like the Wasteland series and Fallout and whatnot, then and definitely Shadowrun. There's a lot of Shadowrun vibe in this for sure. Um, this is definitely something you should check out. I think it's really cool.